ooh, who's gonna take this? That's In many ways, you could you could argue that uh, Tremendo Dude, among all the Shulks, kind of embodies the character the most. I, I would agree with that as well. His uh, his focus on flexibility and adapting the situation at hand, much like how Shulk does with his Minato arts. All right, now interesting. Both very defensive play. Great tomahawk grab by Kamehameha. Opting for those full hop, those short hop nairs, just like you were talking about, Ooh. using the disjoint to uh, catch Tremendo as he tried to jump on stage. Yeah, that new player having so little landing lag. I believe out of all the sword-based aerials in the game, it has the lowest landing lag of all of them at 10 frames. Yes, very much so. And that is also why it makes such a good move when you get the uh, reverse hit that you can, uh, your uh, landing leg is usually lower than what your opponent can react out of shield, so you are at a frame advantage. Oh, but not in that situation, Kamehameha was able to. And speed art not helping in that situation exactly, with the yeah. lower damage output. And I love that uh, Kamehameha. Oh! Wow, drop shield, completely unexpected option right there. No, it's Tremendo dude going for the dare there. That can catch opponents at the ledge, dragging them off stage, but unfortunately, this game a lot closer than you think. A lot of uh, a lot of hits back and forth. I feel like, despite of course Tremendo Dude's incredible experience versus character, there's certain rather unorthodox decision making that Kamame is doing. Like stuff that Shulk wouldn't conventionally opt for, but because of his oh. top player knowledge, definitely. he's able to capitalize on them. Now back throw definitely killing on the Smash Bell back platform. Having some very good knockback growth on it. It's going to kill when it working. But that's exactly what you say, is that Kamehameha is a Shulk who doesn't play like a Shulk. So it's, easy, it's hard to adapt. Oh, swing better about F tilt having such good knockback. Basically a mini smash attack. Definitely going to kill. Kamehameha waiting for an air dodge after that down throw, which is what, what you usually go. Try to go for some sort of uh, tech situation. Down throw, waiting for him. Opting for the busker while he's off stage, which is very good. Trying to catch uh, damage if Tremendo makes a bad decision when he gets back onto the stage. But returning to neutral now. Trying to steadily space with these back ends. Now, Tremendo going through a lot of raw grabs here, which are just getting uh, aerialed out by Kameme. So he's going to have to be careful and maybe uh, condition with a tomahawk or something more before he goes for those grabs. Oh, getting the footstool there, helping him land. Otherwise, that would have been a very, uh, very bad situation. About to get grabbed by Kameme. Reading that double jump forward. A Tremendo Dude is a, a player, I don't know if he coined the phrase, but uh, something that you will see a lot of Shulk players doing, especially when coming on stage like that, is what he likes to call holding forward, in which they have prioritized hitting their opponent even while in the disadvantage state. And uh, that is the sort of situation that you see there, whenever your focus is solely on hitting the opponent. Going for the down throw. Oh, and completely forgot to mention, we're not on Omega Gower for yep. once. Back on Smashville once again. So hopefully... Oh, this is a dangerous situation on the platform there. Even uh, a down throw will kill midway through. Oh, that oh. up air! I tasted that! That would have been... Pixels off! <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, Kamehameha has to be careful. He did not deactivate Smashville off stage, which is... Worked into his advantage, actually, but it can be very, uh, very dangerous. Usually, as soon as you hit your disadvantage stage, you are wanting to immediately deactivate Smash, because more, nine times out of ten, it's going to hurt you. Your reduced damage is going to mean you can't use your safe aerials uh, damage on shield in order to help you land. And if you get hit again, you're potentially dead. That increased knockback. That said, though, him making the decision to maintain Smash there, of course, helped him seal that game. Most likely because he felt confident in his ability to actually finalize and close that last stock. Yeah, and he wasn't at a situation where anything bar a very high knockback move would have killed it. It would have just sent him into an edge guarding situation. And now for the first time so far in this round, we are seeing Battlefield come out. So definitely a yeah. different dynamic of gameplay to be expected. What do you think, uh, what do you think we're going to see here, Erico? It's hard to say, honestly. <laughs> um... I think one of the things that is really interesting to see is how Shulks play around Battlefield. Usually when you think of a character on Battlefield, you think of characters who get a lot of uh, combos off of the different situations. But Shulk himself, his disjoint makes it so it's more of a, a juggling situation and trying to catch opponents on the platform, having a lot of good disjoints, such as up tilt. I believe the very tip of up tilt is able to hit the top of Smashville platform. 
Wow. Incredibly. That's right. And so those are the situations as well as, you know, Nair, uh, up air as we were talking about with the low landing leg. There's the up air right there. Up air killing our mid, 85%. It's huge knockback. It's, it's, uh, it's strong. Many people don't believe it, but I believe it's stronger than the Rosalina up air. It has a such great knockback growth, especially with Smash Art. You'll be surprised how early it kills. Beautiful way on that spot dodge coming from Kamehameha. We've just been seeing that so often, just the way he's able to wait and just read his opponent's defensive options from there. Definitely. And so, Tremendo well, not getting the down tilt after the Buster down throw. It might have actually been due to the additional damage Kamehameha was taking and putting him slightly out of that percent. Because that confirm only works for a very small window, unfortunately. So now this is what we're talking about here, using uh, Shulk's disjoint to catch Kameme as he lands on the platform, which Nair, up tilt, and up air all working greatly to Tremendo's advantage. Oh, and unfortunately, Tremendo do hitting every single one of Kameme's up airs, and that is not hitting Kameme at all. <laughs> but a great percentage lead into his favor, though, for all this work. Oh, but a very bad Nair right onto the field. So Kamehameha could very easily take this back with Tremendo in jump and himself in Buster. That, I, I don't remember the math, but the 22% increase from uh, from jump hurts a lot in, in combination with 13 for Buster. Yeah, you're seeing those uh, those Buster back airs doing over 20-something percent yes. oh ludicrous my damage. Even his back throw is also doing 20-plus versus jump shot. That is not what you want to see. Oh, and a very, almost a panicky up smash there, Tremendo, just wanting to see off the stock. Oh! Trading with the up air. Good shield. answer from Tremendo Dude but going she, for the attack. But Shield Art saving his life there as well. That could have been very well stocked and up. Ooh, shield off offline. This could be it. Aiding for the air dodge this time. But Kameme. Oh, wow. oh Kameme didn't give him the air dodge, but unfortunately went too low to recover as a result. Now that is that is something that Shulk himself can also can do. You saw how Dude just went off off stage, just threatening the fair with Kameme. Kameme didn't want to commit to the air dodge because that would be Tremendo to spare, but just that pressure there forced him to recover too low. Yeah, Very good stuff. Shulk's ability to intimidate and just threaten his opponents off stage thanks to his ridiculously good aerial mobility in, uh, in speed and jump. As well as his good disjoint in which the opponent can't possibly contend with it unless they're right in his face. Okay, now Town and City first time as well in this bracket. Yeah, we're seeing real stage counts between these two gentlemen. It's uh, definitely interesting to see a refreshing change of pace. Yes, definitely. And seeing how the uh, the platform usage as well as the different uh, blast zone heights is working into the uh, situation. As we saw, Tremendo living long, even from an up air on Battlefield, just due to the increased size of the blast zone. Great pivot grab there from Tremendo, getting the forward throw, but not getting too much off of the uh, ledge trap, unfortunately just letting Kameme get back on stage. Like you see once again Kamehameha just waiting for that defensive option from Tremendo Dude and capitalizing with the neutral air. Again, another read on that roll, but just a little bit off on the spacing for the for the for the grab. And so that was something that uh, in the Shulk House last night we were talking with Nico about that he that he talks about. Oh great Nair getting the untechable. Tremendo teching himself. Oh my goodness. Um, but with the roll that you were talking about, is that many Shulks do have a roll behind to have it especially in situations where you are right next to your opponent, uh, in an uncomfortable position for Shulk, right up close. Oh. Your first reaction is going to be, I need to get out of here, and a roll is usually a rather safe option, and Kameme is using that, seeing how Tremendo Dude gets the rolls out of those uncomfortable situations. Oh. Yeah, and that's what really separates, I believe, that really separates the really strong characters from the not as strong characters. Shulk's lack of a really solid grounded game, not having a particularly fast grounded button, yes. means that he can't really alleviate that close range pressure effectively. So he just, oh, the oh, shadow the eye shadow frame! Eye. He went for the shadow eye, but Kameme, <laughs> I think was, I don't know whether he was uh, keeping away, aware of it as he knew about shadow eye, or was just playing safe as we all know Shulk's counter does last for a very long time. You do not want to mess with that unless you're certain the frames are done. Living still from that ba uh, smash or back there, I think it was. Yeah, even in Monado smash, he managed to very good manage to DI, stay alive. I yeah, not that. Oh, that what? time again. The too? What? Kamehameha has the magic DI. We need to steal this man. <laughs> Waiting for the air dodge, but not getting anything from it. Too, too low. That, and that unfortunately also having to think about where Shulk's fair hit. Oh, the intangibility frames! I get so happy every time. So much is going on. 
getting that Nair Kamami off stage, having to switch off with shield, yeah. and that's going to mean the stock. Finally, the first stock gone after over two and a half minutes. And it's working into Tremendo's favor. And this is game three, so the winner of this will uh, have the set in his favor. Dying off the top From shock back, back air. air. That's definitely not something that you see every day. No. Probably just wanting to DI that uh, a little bit differently. He would want to... But uh, either way, he was long past uh, most uh, reasonable kill percent. So, oh, again, Kamehameha jabbing away his problems after that double uh, spot dog he did with grab. Yeah, that was definitely a good decision from Kamehameha. The meaty active frames of the jab and the good damage output overall were really good. Especially in really Buster. That was... Uh, Buster jabs are absolutely delicious, even on their own, even though you get nothing off of them. Yeah, 18% for the full jab combo, I believe, off yes. of a Buster jab. Oh, great uh, rising nair there from Tremendo. I think wanting to uh, commit me to air dodge there and uh, one get a fair, not an F tilt. But still working in his favor. Oh, platforms. Oh, that, oh he was going, going for, for the, the shadow, shadow eye again. Yeah, that... But Kamehame grabbing him. Oh, barely off the mark from that forward smash. Yes, that forward smash can clip below the edge and two frame, but unfortunately not active uh, beyond uh, two frames for each hit, I believe. So, oh, that nair. Is this? Oh no. Okay, Kamehame backing off, interestingly. He could have gotten... Oh, again, Kamehame with the DI of... Um, oh my goodness! The rage preventing the, the, the air connection from hitting. connecting. Yep, very tight. Oh my goodness! Who's gonna... I'm so scared! Oh my gosh. Okay, smash. and the smash art coming, oh. activating at the wrong time. Oh. And unfortunate for Kamehame, but... Taking Tremendo to Game 3 last stop, not a uh, bad feat at all. Mm. Definitely Kamehameha showing how, how well he knows his character. And unfortunately, that smash art at the end was probably an unfortunate decision as they were approximately in neutral against smash art, very weak in neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, not one that you want to do unless you